Hey everyone, happy new year. So happy, um, 2024. Um, for me, the energy for 2024, it, it feels abundant. I feel like there's definite new beginnings. There's definite shifts that have already be happening and that will now present. And we are out of Mercury retrograde. So Mercury is now direct. And so there's going to be more ease and flow with communication. Things are going to start to move forward. So the energy, everything was kind of in like we were in a holding pattern. We were in a standstill place as we were, sorry, I'm burping. I'm, I'm having my, um, my bubble. What flavor is it? My bubbly or buble, uh, blackberry. It's delicious. All right, so yeah, we're, we've been um, going through some more releasing. I, I don't know about you, but I've been very, a lot of emotions have been coming up. So it'd be like one day we'll be like down in the depths of it, just feeling it. And it was like a couple of really good days where I was shedding so many tears and and having insights and going back into the past and to clear stuff to get clear first of all on what was going on and the clarity that I have now right um of seeing what the purpose of the past was so purpose from relationship from various relationships you know whether it's the workplace or love relationships or family um, the perfect, perfect purpose of any particular health issues, um, finances in any area of your life. And there might be specific areas that have been really present for you right now. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine and she was saying, you know, in this area of your life, this is where you're struggling. And in that area, I'm doing great. But in the area that I have been struggling in, you have been doing great. And so it's it's interesting to be able to see that and to be a support for each other. So having a really great support, even if it's just one person, but, you know, someone that they're not going to judge you can, they'll be your sounding board for you. It is safe for you to be you and for you to have the feelings that you're having. So you can just have them. Like we need to have them and embrace them, not push them away and ignore them. Because when we do that, the shit is just going to cycle up again and you're going to stay within that cycle for now. So if you are currently in a cycle where you're experiencing discomfort you're, or you're just not happy in a certain area of your life, well, we need to create a shift. We need to break that loop, whatever patterns that you are in, it's time to release them. So emotions give you an opportunity to see, okay, hey, this feels uncomfortable. Let's feel it and let's get clear about what it's about. Because sometimes we can be feeling the feels based on old patterns, old patterns of thought, old, old reactions, emotions that will come up. And so we need to notice what those thoughts are, notice what our reactions are, just observe, be an observer of that. And then set the intention of getting clear on really what's important to you. You know, instead of doing things, like doing things or reacting to things in autopilot, which might be reactions based on patterns from childhood, which some of our childhood stuff that we learned maybe was amazing, but other things that we've learned, we saw, we felt, we experienced, can be from old distortions that can create that discomfort in your life, can create that loop, that pattern. So once we can see things, we can observe things, it gives you an opportunity to actually move forward consciously, move forward in a way that feels good. You know, tune into your heart when you're making decisions, not going, what should I do? What's the, what's the right thing to do? What are people gonna think, you know, like, they told me this and they told me, oh, forget that, right? Just 
let that let that go and instead tune into just what feels good in your heart what what would be fun what would be fulfilling um and and that's what's important and then the stuff that you realize is no longer yours, you can be grateful for it. Be grateful for those patterns because you had experiences to be able to get to you to this point to be at a new level of clarity and maybe even gratitude. And maybe it's inspiration to create what you want to create in your life for 2024. So I am going to... I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants, but I got some inspiration beforehand. I usually do fly by the seat of my pants because I just intuitively, <laughs> I'm intuitively flowing forward. But what I mean by that is, um, I'm initially inspired to pull some cards from the Oracle of Unicorns deck. I keep on like looking at the cover. Um, beautiful deck. And we're going to get a summary of the themes for this year. So a summary for the overall themes. Now, it's going to be a little bit different for each horoscope. And you know what I think I'm going to do? Um, I'm going to set the intention of time and inspiration uh, opening up for me to do a 2024 reading for each of the horoscopes. I think that would be really cool. So got, got that channeling now, that inspiration now. So um, we'll, we'll make that happen. I, I don't know how soon. It might be within the next week. Uh, so stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to start with this. And then I, I also want to go to my um, the Wild Unknown Tarot. So I'm going to go to that one. And with that one, I'm going to... It, it might be a combination of things. With this particular deck, I normally channel a bit from the pick, and then I might even be inspired to go right to the book for the particular messages, and then maybe channel some more. So anyways, it will be a combination of that. Um, that's what I got so far. And then we'll see what else happens. I was inspired to get my animal deck, so we might go in there, or we might do a little bit different than what I just said. But anyways, that's, that's what I was guided to, so let's go. Let's see how this flows. Okay, the Oracle of Unicorns deck. There's one. Oh, and there's a couple more. Okay, so they're literally flying out. Let's see what the other ones are. Okay, so I'm going to go with the first one that fell to my right, your left. I think, I think that's how you guys see it. Okay, so the first one is awareness. Oh, so beautiful. I feel like this is very much in alignment with what uh, we were talking about. So live in the moment. Be conscious of your thoughts. Look for signs and guidance. I love that. You can see the intensity of that light shining down and guiding you. So we get different messages in different ways. And, and one of the major ways we get messages is from our higher self. And we can feel stuff either uh, like physically, energetically. We might feel things within our body, within our energy centers, um, emotions will come up and those emotions are also, um, uh, I'll call it a sign. I'll call it guidance for what maybe isn't working for you, what you're letting go of. Um, you can get messages in dreams. I've been having really intensive, um, dreams, uh, dreams that brought up emotions. Uh, as soon as I woke up, I'm like, holy shit. So I had like fear coming up, um, the fear of the unknown, fear of failure, um, and yeah, the pattern of not being enough that was coming up uh, within my dreams. And I had emotions coming up, not only about uh, love relationships, um, you know, healing from the past, uh, but also for, um, for career, 
career, finances. So all that stuff has been coming up and it can be so scary, right? And it can be uncomfortable. And I had a couple of amazing walks and talks with a friend. It was like walking, talking, crying, walking, talking, crying, cry, 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 um, then a goodbye. And, uh, and then a processing, right? And it, uh, it's pretty amazing because I also want to say there's more message that wants to come up for me and you might be in alignment with this. Uh, so for New Year's, it, we did something different and we actually went downtown Toronto and we were getting some different <laughs> signs. First of all, we were going to leave at a certain time, right? And then keys got locked in the trunk. We had to call CAA that delayed our timing, which then we didn't take the train. We drove down instead. Drive was great. Um, in the end, it was the traffic coming out and the, the congestion, even it's just the people. We were like sardines watching fireworks and stuff. But at the same time, it was exciting. You know, being within the energy of that, all these people celebrating together, celebrating that not only 2023 is done and maybe whatever you accomplish, but also excitement of wiping that slate clean, starting anew. You know, I'm doing this, I'm, I'm filming this video on Jan 1st. So to me, this is a clean slate, a new page of the chapter of your story, right? And it's exciting too. But notice the fears, notice the fears, notice the anxieties and trust that everything has a purpose. So if you simply move forward in just what feels right, right now, and if you don't know anything else beyond that, you don't. So we need to also let go any anxiety of what might be next. All we can do is make a choice from where we're at right now. That's it. And then you might make a different choice and, and then you move forward and see what presents as you're, as you're moving forward. That's it. We need to pay attention to the signs. So I was talking about dreams. Um, I was talking about the feeling, your emotions, the energy within your body. You can get messages from outside sources. So maybe animals that you come across. You can look up the meaning online for that spirit animal. And, uh, you know, yeah, any type of spiritual messages that can go along with the vibration of a particular animal or insect or flower or color or number. We might see patterns of numbers. We could get messages from that too. We might overhear a conversation, hear a particular song, or you turn on the, the television and a preview comes on and, and the, the first words that you hear or the theme that, that comes up. All of those are beautiful synchronicities to help guide you. So if you ask for guidance, and you look for messages. You know, if I want clarity on something, I will ask before I go to bed. And then there's a really good chance I'll have some type of dream or, or vision or words that come in associated with what I was asking for. So you are worthy of asking. And it's just about putting in that energy to uh, to set an intention, to move forward, to get clear, to let go of shit that uh, that we no longer need, right? And talking about shit, it's the patterns of thought, the patterns of actions, the patterns of being in that loop of which does not create you joy. So we wanna create more joy. Okay, so I'm just gonna repeat, live in the moment, be conscious of your thoughts, look for signs and guidance. Okay, let me just take a sip. All right, the other two, let's see. This one uh, came out uh, not too long ago, uh, Beloved. 
Prepare for your life partner. Romance is returning to your relationship. Believe you are lovable. So if you are already in a relationship, that relationship has the opportunity this year in 2024 to go a, a deeper connection than you have ever experienced before. And, and maybe with this particular partner, you, you feel like you already have a beautiful connection. Well, that can only get uh, deeper. If you are already within, I'm hearing entanglement, if you are already within a relationship that you feel entangled uh, or entangled, that you feel not heard, uh, that you can't necessarily be yourself. You, maybe you're walking on eggshells trying to not make the person that you're with upset right? Because they don't like you being a certain way or they need you to be a certain person or do things a certain way in order to meet, make their themselves happy. The most important thing is that you are in a relationship where you can just be you and you will be loved by being you. Now, there's going to be some things that can drive you bonkers about your partner. And sometimes it's sim simply because of, um, a male, female, or feminine, masculine differences in the way we operate with communication, with attentiveness, with, um, or, and it can also be certain characteristics or even personality that um, they will do different areas of their life different than what you might, you know, whether it's career choices, whether it's parenting, but it could also be from how we grew up, right? There's so many different nuances, but the most important thing is within a relationship, you need to be able to be you and we should have a desire and um, a desire to understand and love and accept our partner for who they are. That could be our goal. That should be your goal if you want a healthy relationship. And so in order for you to truly understand, you need to have communication. And sometimes communication, if you're not used to it, can be uncomfortable. It can be uncomfortable at first, and then it gets easier and easier to have those uncomfortable, awkward situations. And those uncomfortable, awkward situations don't always stay uncomfortable and awkward. It gets surprisingly easier and easier to be able to speak your truth. And the thing is, we need to give each other space and not be in a reactive mode when our partner is going to tell us how they're feeling about a certain situation. If they're not feeling loved, if they're not feeling respected, if they're just not satisfied, then when you have those uncomfortable conversations to bring those things up, and it's not finger pointing, it's just this is the way I'm feeling and it may, and maybe you've been already getting clarity of what you need to have more satisfaction or joy or feel, feel loved or feel respected. And for couples out there or even non couples, but for uh, couples reading the Gary Chapman five love, love languages, I definitely recommend it right now. My boyfriend and I were, I'll read him a chapter over the phone or partial chapter over the phone. So we've gone through three chapters and we're gonna keep going through it together so we can better understand each other. Um, and basically, so we can love each other the way that they need to be loved. And, and so when we have those conversations, we can find out what, you know, like sometimes we can get into arguments just because we don't understand where they're coming from. So we need to be open for them to explain where they were coming from and for you to be able to explain where you're coming from so you can understand each other. You know, the, the one message um, that I've gotten before in relationships is when I want to share where I was coming from so they can understand. And at the same time, I'm sorry. Like, I'm so sorry if I hurt you, right? If I hurt you, I'm so sorry. But this is where I was coming from. 
I find being able to share that is first of all so important for the person because I, I have such an inner desire to be heard and because I never would want to hurt you on purpose never so if someone in my life is upset with me um, for something I did do or didn't do or whatever I'm like oh my goodness like I would want to like talk about it tell me where are you coming from what happened <laughs> what were you feeling and then I want the space to be able to um, to explain who I am and why I do the things I do you know because when we can embrace each other for who we are, well, at the same time, working to fuel our partner's love languages or children's love languages, that's not always gonna be easy. Um, but having this self-awareness um, will help us to be able to love each other the way we wanna be loved. Now. There are butterflies on there, right? Butterflies is about transformation. So think about the beautiful transformation within your relationships. Now, in particular, it's talking about your, um, your life partner, right? Like the one that you will have a beautiful connection to not only help each other to grow, you'll be a mirror to each other in some way in some things you need to do more of what they're doing or do less of of what they're doing um yeah so just be open to that have work on that communication to understand each other and want to be in their shoes that's empathy when we want to be in their shoes to understand their viewpoint of a situation and then you're like, oh, no way. Like this is, this is where I was seeing it. We can have different lenses of perception. So to get that understanding and that compassion and love is just understanding what each other's lenses are. It's not one being wrong and the other one being right. It's just what is your lens of perception? Now, sometimes each of us can adjust our lenses of perception. There's an opportunity to adjust them to actually see things in more with more clarity. Because when we release old patterns of thought, then it changes the lens, it creates more focus. So it's really important. It doesn't matter what your gender is. Um, we all need to tune in to our emotions. That's emotional intelligence, right? It's not girly. It's not sissy. <laughs> I don't know why I use those words in particular, but it is very much um, a strong trait. Um, that's not the right word, but that's what those are the two words that came up. So it's a strong trait to be able to strive to be, um, I could say the best you can be. It might be sounding a little bit, uh, yay team, right? But, and maybe that's too much for some people. Um, but be, that actually reminds me of uh, this commercial for being in the army, be the best that you can be in the army. I'm not getting the right tune, but anyways. Um, it, it's important for us to do that because when we don't strive to be a better person and be a better mom, be a better dad, be a better aunt, uncle, friend, if we're not striving for that, we're going to have stagnancy in, in our life, in our physicality, in our energy. If you think about stagnant energy, so when you're not learning, it's like, you're not growing. So if you're not growing, then you're dying, right? I know that's, you don't have to take that literally, but energetically, it will be sucking the light out of your soul. If you think about the difference between, let's say a body of water that has um, a water fountain flowing into it, lots of movement and air circulation, openness, a lot of filtration happening. That is going to be clean, beautiful water. You know, it makes me think of an image of 
um, you know, someone on vacation in their bikini, just standing under this waterfall and getting like this warm, amazing water that just, you know, the whole experience of it would make you feel so exuberant, so alive. That's the energy that we want, we want to have. When we're not growing in a certain area of your life, when you're not making changes, if you're unhappy in a certain area of your life and you're not creating movement and change to move forward in a different way, then you're going to be stagnant. So now you can picture like a pond that is really swampy, really swampy, weedy, mucky, probably a lot of leeches and stuff in there. Not something you want to swim in. It's sludgy. And you wouldn't want to drink water that's sludgy like that too, right? So wherever your thoughts are, wherever your energy is, like if you're getting heavy with your thoughts or in a place of anxiety for long periods of time or you have the fear coming up, if you don't deal with that stuff, you're going to get that swampiness, that pond leachy stuff. And it is literally sucking the energy, the vibrancy from you. And it's draining the energy so you don't have energy to draw in your desires. We want to be radiating brightly. We want that waterfall to just be flowing down. We're feeling all sexy and awesome, <laughs> right? So that's movement. We want movement. So if you want change in a certain area of your life, take action. This is the time we need to take action in 2024. And at the beginning of the year, more so, January, February, March, April, it sounded like a, like a cheer. <laughs> um, yeah, January, February, March, April, taking action. Now, of course, you're going to have waves. You're going to need to have downtime. If you get a cold or a flu or you're just like, holy shit, I just, my energy is so drawn out of me. It's because you need to go through um, a rest period, just like trees can rest during the winter, lose their leaves, um, depending where you are in the world. Um, and so sometimes we need to have those rest periods before we grow again. And, you know, maybe it's a day on the couch and just like allowing yourself to chill out or going to bed early. Um, it, you know, maybe you're out for a week. It's cold. Maybe the colder flu really gets you. Maybe that's the time. Like trust, that's the time that you need to rest and rejuvenate and give yourself that time to do that. Okay. A lot of juiciness coming out. This is, this is awesome. Okay. Compassion. You might even want to watch this video in chunks, right? And then watch it again to remind yourself. Okay. So compassion, be gentle with yourself. Forgiveness will set you free. See the light in yourself and in others. Isn't that beautiful? The unicorn looks so gentle and flowy and magical and loving. And look at the big heart. You can see the heart on the, unic on the unicorn. So much softness, brightness, lightness. I could just imagine hugging this unicorn and feeling um, the silkiness of the mane and the vibrancy of the magical energy and just so much love, so much love and softness. So we need to be kind to ourselves. I was talking about taking rest. So when you are sick, then, you know, take the time to, to allow yourself to recuperate. And maybe you're not literally sick, you're just tired. So instead of like jacking up on more coffee, if you don't really have to do something, if you're feeling like I have to, just second guess that. And do I really have to, or could you put it off tomorrow? Could you give yourself 15 minutes? <laughs> could you give yourself two days? Like, Really, when does it have to be done? So if you're feeling drained, give yourself time. Maybe you just need a simple little cat nap and you'll be good, right? But listen, listen to yourself and whatever you need. Also be gentle on yourself with your words because we can have those patterns of, let's say I was talking about not being enough. And so you might have some patterns of thought of like, you fucked up. 
oops, you did it again. <laughs> you really fucked up, right? We can think about that. Made a bad decision. You know, like, uh, I was talking about New Year's Eve and how coming home, like, it, you know what? It took us two and a half hours to get home. We were like chest to back going through the uh, the waterfront and like trying to leave and get out to the street. Everyone, it was, it was so busy, lots of energy. And we were stuck in the parking lot for an hour before we could even leave because of the busyness, the chaos. And then coming home, we ended up getting behind a salt truck. And at the beginning of the night, I told you we got the keys locked in the car. So interesting, a lot of little obstacles, right? We needed to have patience. Uh, we couldn't move any faster than what we were. Like this is just what we were experiencing. And, you know, we could say that we're getting keys locked um, in the trunk that, hey, maybe we weren't meant to go. You know, we could have had a different type of fun or maybe we're just meant to experience this. And it's, you know, I, I love the adventure of it. I totally loved the whole adventure of it. Would I want to do it again? Yeah. No, I'd rather a different experience, but... It was a unique, adventurous experience. And we couldn't go skating. We tried to get there to go to Phillips Square. We couldn't go skating. We got to the place and we had to wait for an hour and a half. And I tried to get hot chocolate. I couldn't get hot chocolate. So whatever, we just had to keep on flowing with it. I'm like, okay, we can't do that. All right, that's fine. Let's just keep on moving forward and see what life brings us. So let's use that analogy as we move forward into 2024. We might have some things that we're like, hmm, I didn't really like that. I'm going to try this way. And you may be like, I didn't really like that either. But then you're getting even more and more clear. Now, maybe you have already been going through a lot of that. Mm, don't like that. Mm. And then, so you've created the clarity about what you do want. And so as you continue to move forward into 2024, make those decisions through your heart as to what feels good and be gentle on yourself about the decisions, decisions you make. Because when things don't necessarily go that, that great, doesn't mean you made a bad choice. You might make a different choice next time, but maybe there was a reason for you to experience it so you can get more clarity in what you really do want. You know, we had some ideas when we were um, at, when we were downtown because we saw the big condos up and people looking from their windows out into the water at the fireworks. I'm like, wow, that would be gorgeous up there. And so wouldn't it be cool to like rent one of, like maybe there's a bed and breakfast or something in one of the apartments, who knows, or just a, a short-term rental that you can get. I don't know, like there's different opportunities. So because we were there, that sparked another idea, which could be a super fun idea for another year. We might not have had that idea. And also when we were watching the fireworks, we saw a boat, uh, a party boat uh, on the water for New Year's. I'm like, that would be fun too. Again, we would not have had that inspiration. The fireworks were great, feeling the energy of everyone. There was one guy that was trying to get us to start O Canada. He was telling his friends, let's do O Canada. And no one was listening. And then I start singing, O Canada. He's like, yeah. So it ended up being two, maybe three or four. And then instead of it growing, someone else started hooting, hollering at someone else. And so whatever, it didn't keep growing but it was kind of a unique moment, you know? So move through life and be grateful for those moments and see what they have to offer you. That you're not making a wrong decision. Be easier on yourself. It's okay. And when something doesn't go your way, kind of rhymes, eh? Okay. When something doesn't go your way, um, be open to what the experience holds for you. Okay. 
So now I am going to go for the tarot. Now, what my thought was for this is I will pull one or more cards for each quarter. So I'm going to pull for four quarters of the year and uh, we'll see what messages come through. So just, you might even want to write this down. You can throw it in your calendar, what to expect in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth. Or you can just review this. Okay. So this is for the first quarter. First quarter of uh, 2024, what messages do you have for us to assist with the energy and opportunities for healing, for growth, for increasing our abundance in all areas of our life? We'll be doing this for each of the quarters, and this is for the first quarter. What do we need for the first quarter? Okay. We have four of cups. So I first want to talk about the moon. So the moon is feminine energy. Now, as we move forward, in order for us to increase our abundance, we not only need the feminine energy, but the masculine energy. So the masculine energy is that taking action. We are, of course, going to have to take action. But in order for the action to be successful and for the energy uh, to truly seed and germinate, right, then we need to have the feminine. So we need to be gentle on ourselves and trust that we are worthy and we are a powerful creator. So you get those clear intentions of what you want to create in your life. You will have it. You will have it. Is there something you've been longing for? Bring that to the forefront. Ask for it right now. Be clear in what you want. You can even pause this video if you want. Take a moment to get super clear on what you want. I'm actually gonna take a brief moment right now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, so we need the feminine energy. So we need to be gentle on ourselves. And as I was saying, trusting that we are worthy and we are a creator. Um, being gentle with the thoughts because we want to fuel our, we want to be our best cheerleader. So, um, you know, maybe you're going to get those pens or waxy marker crayon things that you can put on a mirror so you put on your bathroom mirror i am abundant i am a creator i am fucking awesome <laughs> right i am beautiful and you can look in your eyes and say i am beautiful look right in your soul i am beautiful maybe you can take one of those or interchange them each week and have them in the forefront i like that idea i don't have one of those i'm gonna I think I need to get something like that. All right, bring it on, universe. Okay, so we also need to take the time to be quiet, to slow down. So whether you're taking, you're going to take a nap to rejuvenate and get quiet in that way. All you know, get rid of the noise. Uh, put your phone down. Just take a nap or just rest, just breathe. Some of you might say, I do not take naps. I can't nap, doesn't work for me. That's okay. You're just taking some quiet time to lie there, to breathe. Eyes can be closed, um, tune into your body. You can do belly breathing. So taking these moments to slow down, doing yoga, making sure that you do Shavasana at the end. So it's that time at the end to just be open and release. Um, and be aware of uh, anything that comes in, connecting with your body and your breath. So 
all of that will be really important for 2024 and creating that gentleness. Um, you might have like walking meditations by going into the woods and just taking in the elements and connecting in with, with whatever nature that you see or having fun and connecting in the, with the ground, bringing in mother earth through your feet as you're walking. So having some conscious walks in nature would be really good too. So there is a rat on top. I am going to be going to the book, but I just want to see what comes up right now in regards to the rat. So when I think of a rat, I think of like a dirty sewer animal. I think of how we don't want rats in our homes and our kitchens and restaurants, like all that kind of stuff is just so gross, right? So we've been going through some stuff that has been gross maybe like stuff that just feels uncomfortable but what they're what's also coming up is our patterns of thought that are distorted that actually aren't helping us you know instead of helping us um it is sorry one moment Instead of helping us, it is deterring you from living your dreams. It's self-sabotaging. So um, we need to get rid of that rat to bring in the abundance. So being conscious of those emotions, like I was saying, so in the first quarter, like we'll be doing this, we should be doing this all of our life. <laughs> it's emotional intelligence, right? Um, I'm also going to go to the book. So just one moment, one moment. We can be in gratitude for the muckiness we've been experiencing, for the, the challenging relationships that we have had, having to deal with, um, just something that just felt like nastiness, felt like abuse maybe, right? I felt disrespectful. Whatever you were experiencing, it, it was not good. And we're wanting to get rid of that from our lives. So we need to be clear on what's not serving us and take action and make choices to get rid of the rat. Um, the blocking, the self-sabotaging, the pattern, the loop. Okay, let's see here. There's swords. Okay, cups. Four of cups, okay. An outsider would look upon your life and see supportive relationships, pleasures, and even a bit of luxury, but you don't see it that way. Instead, there's discontentment, apathy, and even greed for more. The Four Cups warns not to take your situation for granted or the people who supported you along the way look around you. Uh, look, okay, the people who supported you along the way, look around you. What are you truly longing for? Name it. And the word is um, associated with it was greed or discontent. So I first want to say that it is not a bad thing to be discontent. It is really good that you notice. Sometimes we're discontent because of a distortion of our perception, such as what the message was in this book. We can have a distortion, which is why we're seeing things a certain way. We're not seeing it as being amazing, abundant, uh, whereas other people looking in can be like, that's freaking amazing, right? So it's all, perception is a really important aspect about being discontent. Hold on. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, there's another burp. Okay. Okay. So our perception is um, 
something that's really important because we also, we need to be grateful for what we do have because what we do have has played a significant role for us and it is the springboard to um, increasing our joy and abundance. But also being conscious of our wants and desires. And where is the desire coming from? Is it truly, does it truly light your heart up, make your heart sing? Or is it just what you think is the right thing to do because that would make you under the definition of wealthy or prosperous or successful, right? We need to create our own personal definition of that, not going what society, what the magazines, what social media would say would be um, satisfying. It's what is satisfying for you. So getting clear on that and always being open to seeing if you have a lens that needs more focusing. And that is seeing old patterns and making steps, strides to change it. And we can do that through our thoughts. And so when we're conscious of our thoughts, then it gives us an opportunity to change our thoughts and we can actively do so. Okay. So more cards came out and it there's three more piles. So and quite a few in one of the piles. So I'm going to pick these based on third, um, second, third, and fourth quarter. I just have to tune in to see which pile is which. Okay, we're going to see as I read these, something might shift in how I'm supposed to share this with you because I feel like there's, yeah, there's a bit of a shift as opposed to just first, second, third, fourth quarter. There might be something else going on here, so hold on. Okay, so right now I was directed for this being second quarter but I feel like these themes are going to continue in the third and the fourth quarter. Um, however, there's a different depth of experience in those, the third and the fourth quarter, okay? So that's why the second quarter one is quite big because it relates to the um, all final three quarters. Okay. Hmm. I need to start here. Okay, so there's five cards here. So the first one, Daughter of Swords. Look at all the beautiful lights there. That makes me think of creativity. Um, softness, I'm also feeling softness. Feminine energy, um, yet also some innocence. Um, the sword, and it is pointing to the left. So if I have it down here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of pentacles. Okay, I am drawn to going to the book. There's more info and I'm going to be channeling from that. Okay, daughter. Son of... Da no, that's daughter of wands. I need swords, people. That's wands. Come on. Where are the swords? Thank you for your patience. 
Okay, son of swords, daughter of swords. Okay. Honest and insightful. The daughter of swords is a young woman whose honesty and insights take her far in life. People truly value her frankness. She learns from keen observation. It almost seems as though she never stops watching. Sometimes this becomes a burden for her as she can't help noticing this or that small detail that could have been done better. Being hard on yourself, think about that one too. There's a potential for her to hold on to those experiences and become spiteful and judgmental. So if there are some things within your life, well, I'm sure there are, right? We all have a situation or experiences in our life that we thought oh, that didn't work so well. <laughs> And, you know, we could potentially call that a failure, but let's change the wording in that and uh, change it to an, a learning experience, right? And it's, or a springboard, a springboard to where we're going. So, um, you know, we don't want to be spiteful or judgmental towards relationships that we have had because we're all our unique selves. And I also truly believe that you, you connect with someone for a purpose and it might just be for a particular reason that you're connecting, you know, maybe, maybe there's only a certain amount of time. Like if it's a reason you're connecting, once that reason has been fulfilled, then you don't need to be with each other anymore, no matter how, um, intense the relationship was like, sometimes it's just done and you, you need someone else for the next level of fulfillment and growth. If you've learned the lessons, life can get more gentle and loving and enjoyable if you've learned the lessons. So as, we don't need, you know, as we try to move forward with, let's say, relationships, we could so easily just stay in the old and have fear that this is going to happen again. But we're, we're different people because we've been going through this beautiful transformation. So, so trust in that and just keep listening to your heart. That's it. Listen to your heart. Listen to what feels right. And if something feels uncomfortable, you could talk it through and try to get to know them more, get, get to know you more, and see if there's more opportunities to heal. The relationships that you have in different areas of your life help you to continue to heal. You know, sometimes we need to take a break before we're in one relationship and go to the next relationship because we need to have that healing on your own first. I think that's most important is to have that healing on your own. But the amount of time that it takes one person to go into the next relationship, the amount of time it takes someone else, you know, someone might be pretty quick and someone might be uh, several years down the road. There's not a right or a wrong. It's just what feels right for you. How much time do you need on your own? And then when you're ready to move forward in those relationships, um, you will continue to have learning. So that's great. All right, I'm gonna go to the pentacles. Okay. Seven of pentacles. So the second quarter, as well as the third and fourth, um, you will have um, chunks of time where you will be processing things and you'll be going through new layers of healing and understanding through these new relationships, these new experiences, maybe new job. Um, so you will um, continue to have these deep thoughts Okay, and you might need to talk things out. You might need to journal. It will help you to get to get clearer. So it's a curious card. The Seven of Pentacles shows a period of contemplation and uncertainty. So you might have uncertainty within different areas that come up, right? That come up with fear, anxiousness, maybe just 
curious as to whether you actually like that or don't like that or where you might want things to go, right? Be curious. And it's okay if you don't know because that helps you to get clearer, ask more questions, ask for help in different ways. You're looking back at all of your hard work and wondering if it's been a failure or success. You can't seem to decide. Shouldn't you be reaping more rewards by now? Maybe so, but the mind has control over perception. It's possible your rewards are waiting for you to recognize them. They are not always monetary. monetary. So sometimes we can have yeah, things coming to us that we didn't expect, even though we're waiting for this, but this, whatever rolls out, whatever flows to you, trust, it's going to be perfect. Flow with it. And so this is the card that was beside the Daughter of Swords, right? And she was having some worry about her past experiences. So instead of the worry be in acknowledgement of the learning and trust that you will create newness with um, as you move forward from your heart with this new lens of perception. But know that there'll be some of this as emotions come up, giving you an opportunity to contemplate. And the lighter perception you have about those emotions coming up, the more optimistic perception that you have about those emotions coming up, the more uh, clear um, definition you have about that will help you to flow through things better. Ooh, I like this card, the magician. Love it. You notice there's one of each. There's the sword, there's a pen pentacle, there's the wand, there's the cup, uh, there's an infinity sign, and we have orange and red and yellow on this card. So like the lower chakras. So, you know, we got the root chakra, so we're going to ground those ideas, those desires down. We have our sacral chakra. We're going to be creative and abundant and fertile. You know, we want to be fertile in order for these ideas to come to fruition. Allow those seeds of ideas to germinate. And then the yellow is the solar plexus, our confidence, our courage, our willpower, our moving forward within our strength and know that we can succeed. We will use our creative brilliance, our magician self to, to move forward and create awesomeness. And so we will have, we're each going to have different timelines depending on your sign, uh, depending on um, who you are currently in partnership, like whatever phase that you're in. So again, this came up for the second quarter, but it's also going to be um, valid for the third and the fourth quarter. And we'll have almost like our own unique time for climax in each of our own individual lives. And that climax is representation of what you're drawing in, of attaining those desires. This is the year for us to be attaining our desires on a, a particular level um, that will be unique to each of us. So what I mean by that is, you know, Maybe you're wanting to have a new vehicle, right? And for one person, that might happen right in 2024. For someone else, you might be getting clear about what you're going to want and how it's going to happen. But that, I'm oh, sorry, it's all going to happen in 2024. But um, whether it's going to happen in which quarter will be unique. I felt like the message was going a different way and then it shifted. Okay, we'll, we'll see if anything else comes up here. Okay, so this is the next card. So we have four of wands. Yeah. I love that, is that green or blue? It looks like blue in the middle. 
Blue in the middle is throat chakra, so communication. And then we also have um, the orange, the yellow, and I can say red, red, orange, and yellow. So again, the lower chakras, and then we're, um, we're gonna be moving forward. Okay, I'm seeing this, it, it, it's giving me the perception of it, it being an eye. Like that's what I'm being drawn to. It feels like an eye, but then I feel like it's also like a representation of, of a vagina, like fertility, giving birth, right? And so we need to speak our truth. Uh, we need to be courageous to actually move forward. We need to ground down our ideas. So to ground the ideas, you need to take action right? And creative action, creative inspiration. So we need to have some play in our life. So we have an opportunity to keep that inspiration there, that creativity flowing so we can move forward. Laughter and play would be very advantageous. Okay. I'm going to leave that one there. We're going to go to the snake, mother of swords. So snakes are about uh, shedding the old and, you know, when they shed their skin um, to bring the new, we're all going through new beginnings and um, in different areas of our lives, we might have some newness. So some of you will be going into a new job or a partnership. Maybe it's going to be a new stage of your life. Maybe you're going to be dating. Maybe you're getting married. Maybe you're having a baby. Like we're all having these like it's it, it's a new phase it's a new beginning and <clears throat> snakes they feel the vibrations of the ground so they they feel things coming towards them um and so your intuition will also be very strong so use your senses to be able to get the messages and it will help you to move forward. So be really conscious of, we were talking about this in the beginning, the different types of messages um, that you can get. Um, again, we have the, the red, orange, and yellow. It's like lower chakras. It's gonna be really important for us to um, stay grounded. My battery is getting low. Uh, to stay to stay grounded and to stay grounded we need to take action you can't always be up in the clouds uh, watch if you are is this, I need to find wand um, watch if you're self medicating mother of wands so be conscious because if you like to use cannabis, if you like to have wine or beer or whatever, um, if you have emotions coming up, um, allow yourself to feel them. Don't go right to drugs or alcohol to help you to feel better. You need to feel those emotions. If you're going to have drugs or alcohol, maybe you like to have a glass of wine, maybe you like to smoke a joint, or um, we need to do it consciously. Uh, be doing it because um, it's gonna bring uh, joy and more alignment, not to take away our pain, okay? So just be conscious of that. Okay, Mother of Wands, attractive, domestic, and vibrant. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay, so the mother of wands is a vibrant woman and a happy mother. Family comes first in her world. Yes. She's very protective of it, and she is a dominant parent within the home. Though proud and determined, she has enough grace and beauty that you'd hardly notice her forceful nature. Oftentimes, she has overcome great pain or trauma in her life. It's important not to get on her bad side. Okay, so whether you are, um, it doesn't matter what your gender is, we can all take from this mother of swords. So it is that domestic side of us, that parent, um, uh, that motherly, that being the caregiver. 
whether you have kids or not, it's, it's being the caregiver. So maybe you have dogs, maybe you have kids, maybe you're taking care of older parents, uh, helping friends, what, whatever it is, um, that's going to be an important aspect for us is creating that family unit, working on that family unit. And that family unit might look different than what it has looked in the past. And there is not, you know, I, like I remember, I guess all my life, I thought it was like, you get married, you have two kids and you should want a boy and a girl because that's perfect. That's like the million dollar family. And so I know we have already so many different types of families and so, so such beautiful differences. And whatever has been in your mind that has been right, like this is what it's supposed to look like, I feel like there's going to be a, a, a potential transition in that. So it can look maybe a little bit differently or maybe a lot differently, or maybe it's already been transitioning into looking something that's different and unique that you don't even know what it's really supposed to look like. You're just kind of flowing with it, but you can create it the way that it feels good for you and works for you and whatever your family is. And even if you are one person, maybe you, your family are, is your friends, uh, your friend circle. So it's all different and unique for each and every one of us, but nurture that and, and create those boundaries too. let the people within that family unit know what you want, what will bring you joy and contentment and what you feel will bring a beautiful family dynamic, right? So there's going to be some nurturing, some shifting, um, some, in enhancing in relationships and communication and more so being there for each other. Okay. So we went through those. So now the third and the fourth quarter have some additional themes here. So the third quarter we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six of pentacles. And they actually look like roses, beautiful roses. When I think about roses, I think about love, passion, desire, and our desires can go, soon too, can go in, in, in different ways, right? We can have healthy desires and we can have not so healthy desires. And what I mean by that is, you know, you could have like a lustful desire. Maybe you're in a relationship, right? And if you have that lustful desire of the forbidden, let's say, whatever it was forbidden for you, like why, where is that coming from? So tuning into that, right? And when we have desires that we just, we know will fill our heart will create contentment, satisfaction, love, gratitude. That's the desires that we want to put energy into, that we want to be fulfilled. Okay, so let me get here. Soon, Chewy, I'm almost done. Hi, Dee hello. Okay, Six of Pentacles. Love this. Prosperity, growth, generosity. The Six of Pentacles indicates that your long-awaited fruits are ready for harvesting, bringing more wealth than anticipated. Make sure you are generous during this bountiful time. This card can also signify generosity coming from someone else. If this is the case, accept the help with grace and put the resources to good use. Okay, so this is the third quarter. I love it. Okay, and then the fourth quarter, the hanged man. 
Okay. I'm going to take it right from the book because I don't want to have any personal judgments coming up because at first I'm like, but hey, oh shit. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, it's okay. I don't think there's any bad card. It, I truly believe the messages we need for clarity for movement forward, for letting go of the old. Where is it? Here it is. Oh, <laughs> what did I say? Letting go of the old. Okay. Sacrifice. Letting go. Many people talk about the art of letting go, but what does it really mean? How do you achieve it? The hanged man has all the answers. He's the master of non-attachment. This card implies there's a sacrifice or a difficult or painful situation coming up in your life. Though you naturally want to resist and struggle through it, be more like the hanged man. Find stillness, open your eyes, and use this new perspective to learn something. You're stuck here either way. Yeah, you're stuck here either way. Okay. This, again, this does not have to be a bad thing. It's just there might be something, there might be a thought pattern, a way of doing things that you need to let go of. There might be a relationship that in whatever era of your life that you might need to let go of. And this is in the fourth quarter. Um, again, there could be some shift based on um, your particular circumstances, okay? Um, so you might need to, whether it's letting go of a thought, letting go of a relationship, letting go of a pattern, a way of doing things, letting go of an, a desire of something looking a certain way, because there might be another way that will be way better. So just being open to that and whatever, you might be like even working on a project and maybe you have to let it go or it doesn't, doesn't, and that doesn't end up working out because some, it was just supposed to be a temporary thing until this comes in, right? So that could feel like a failure, but that's just your perspective. It could be like, no, that was just like a, a space holder until this comes in, right? So it's all good. Just flow with it and, and trust and allow yourself to let go and flow. The more you can just keep on flowing, the more abundance will flow. Be open, listen, take action and flow. And that's the year. That's 2024. Feels pretty good. I'm going to have to watch this again and maybe mark the stuff in my calendar. Um, yeah. Anyways. Maybe I could time code if that's something you'd be interested in. And if I don't remember to do it, so I should be watching this myself so I can remind myself, but I could time code and put quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. So then you can come back at those points to be able to remind yourself. So uh, if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one session with me, you can uh, go onto my website, thejoyfulyogini.ca and um it, a reading healing session um uh, psychic party i uh, want me to do a show like i i have uh, an hour and a half to a two hour uh comedic stage show where i channel and um i my character comes into play and i story tell and anyway so if you're interested in something like that you can let me know as well from my life to yours, namaste. Oh, and you can join yoga. Again, the joyfulyogini.ca on Thursday, 7.45 p.m. I have a, um, a vinyasa flow and you can join over Zoom. My in-person is full, but you can join over Zoom if it's something you're interested in. So that's Eastern Standard Time, 7.45 p.m. And the classes start January 18th. Um, yeah, so register ASAP so I can send you the link. From my light to yours, Nova's day. Have an amazing, abundant in all areas of your life, 2024. Mwah.